Hey guys, hope you're well. Uh, it's good to be back with you. Uh, it's Dr. D. Uh, we're talking about long run production. Oop, zoomed out. Sorry. Long run production. There we go. Long run production. And what we've looked at so far, uh, we looked at short run production, uh, where we keep one uh, input constant and change the other input. We've looked at changing inputs by holding quantity constant, isoquants. What we're going to look at now is when we change all inputs proportionally. Sometimes called scale. So we scale up or we scale down. And in particular, we'll call this returns to scale. We're going to examine returns to scale. So how do we do this? Well, in our model, it's pretty straightforward. So we can double all our, our capital, we can double all our labor, and what we want to know is whether the output is going to increase in proportion to that, less than in proportion, or greater than in proportion. So for example, let's say we have a production function, f of l comma k. Now let's say that instead of l and k, we're going to double this. So we're going to instead look at f of 2L comma 2K, where whatever L was, whatever K is, we're doubling those. If it is the case, so if it is the case, that's an ugly, ugly F, I apologize. If the production function with double the labor and double the capital equals twice the production function with just labor and capital, what we say is that f of lk has constant returns to scale. Da -da -da. Constant returns to scale. All right, the mathemat this mathematical property is known as homogeneity of degree one. More generally, uh, we, we can say that a production function or any function is homogeneous homogeneity of degree k little k not capital now just some constant little tiny k if for t greater than zero f of t l comma t k equals t little k t raised to the little k times f of l comma k. Now most functions are not homogeneous of any degree, but if they are homogeneous of, of a degree and, and that degree is one, then we can say that they have constant returns to scale. Um, so for you know for constant returns to scale, call it C R S, we can see that if t equals one, then f of tl comma tk equals t to the first power f of l comma k. Tidy that up a little bit. Okay, so that's, a, that's an example of uh, what this looks like. So let's think about an example. Let's look at a linear production function. The simplest case, we have a linear production function where to find out how many units your firm produces of output, we just take your labor and add it to your capital, L plus K. Let's see what happens if it doubles its in out input. So it's creating Q. Q is decided by this production function. We plug these in, we add them together. Let's see what happens if we double both of these. What is F of 2L comma 2K? Well, that's going to be... 2 times L, which is you know what we have here for the L placeholder, plus 2 times K. And now using the distributive property of multiplication and addition, we can distribute out that 2, 2 times L plus K. And then because L plus K was our original production function, it is the case that this is equal to 2 times F of L comma K. So, what can we say about this? Well, when we doubled our inputs, that's this right here, 
we ended up with twice the output, 2q. And so we can say that this production function exhibits constant returns to scale. All right. Now, in addition to this, we have the other cases, right? We have cases where we might have increasing returns to scale. So what do increasing returns to scale look like? Well, we have increasing returns to scale if when we scale up, we get a more than proportionate return. So if we have f of tl comma tk, and over here we have t times f of l comma k, as long as t is greater than 1, meaning we've scaled up, then it should be the case that this one is bigger. right? So if we double in that case, uh, we get more production than we would if we just doubled our output. So if we double our inputs, we get more than if we just doubled our outputs. So that's one, one case. Uh, we also might have decreasing returns to scale. For decreasing returns to scale, we can, you know, it might, it still can be the case that when we increase our inputs, we increase our output, but it increases by a less than proportionate amount. So if we increase our inputs, we've got T, L, and T, K, um, and then we have what would be a proportionate increase in output, T times F of L and K, and again, T has to be greater than 1, so that we're not, you know, if it's, t if it's less than 1, we're, we're reducing our size, um, but if it's greater than 1, meaning we're increasing our, out our inputs, then uh, we'll increase our output maybe, um, but certainly not by as much as we've increased it. So, why might these things happen? Well, uh, it could be the case that a firm has increasing returns to scale because why? Well, we might have specialization. So we might, at the beginning, we might have some workers doing lots of uh, the same or lots of different things. But once you get to larger levels, you have more specialization in terms of labor. Uh, you might have uh, capital as well. So you might have an example would be, I don't know, a small multi-function copier that doesn't actually work very well. Um, but then you get to the larger size where now you have a dedicated copier and a dedicated scanner and they just do a better job or, or screen printing stuff. You know, you can have a screen printing t-shirt uh, press that's manual, but then as you get larger, you get more capital. Um, uh, you know, you, rather than having four crappy ones, you can have one excellent one, and it just makes things better. Why might they have uh, decreasing returns to scale? Um, usually, we talk about some kind of limit on uh, management. And so lots of times, you know, you can say, oh, well, you don't actually have decreasing returns to scale. You just failed to notice one of your inputs. Um, but in principle, yeah, I guess in principle, you would, you know, in, you might expect that you wouldn't generally have decreasing returns to scale. But Organize, organizational complexity is kind of the, the one here. Again, you can redefine your uh, inputs to make this uh, something that doesn't exist, right? Well, but then we just have organizational management as one of our inputs. But depends on your model. And in this model where we just have capital and labor, we might have uh, decreasing returns to scale. All right, now just to kind of give a, a last example or, or play with this a little bit to try to get an idea for uh, for when we would have... Um, when, how, how we would think about this. Let's imagine that we had a uh, let's imagine that we had a general Cobb-Douglas production function. So let's say we have a Cobb-Douglas production function. For those of you who've never seen these before, this is what they look like. They're handy because uh, they're analytically tractable, meaning they, they, they make, make math easier. They, they act, they behave well. But a Cobb-Douglas production function looks like this. Q as a function of labor and capital uh, is equal to the number of units you have in labor raised to some power alpha and the number of units of capital raised to some power beta. Those things multiplied by each other. So let's say that we wanted to scale this up. What does that look like? Well, if we scale it up, now we have f of tl comma tk, which is going to be, now instead of l here, we have to put tl in here. And that's going to be raised to the alpha. And instead of k here, we have to put tk here. And that's going to be raised to the beta. And again, we're going to assume that t is positive, uh, greater, than, greater than 1, so we can see if it, what happens when we're increasing here. 
Well, what happens? Well, first we want to distribute this uh, the exponents. So we're going to get t alpha times l to the alpha times t to the beta times k to the beta. Now we've uh, now we've uh, distributed our our exponents. All right. Now because these are all multiplied together. We can take advantage of the commutative property of multiplication to reorder them however we like. So that's going to be t to the alpha. I would like to reorder them. How am I deciding to reorder them? Well, remember, we want to try to get we want to try to get something that looks like our original production function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this thing by itself. The way to do that, as far as I can see, is just to switch these two. All right, if we switch these two, then uh, l to the alpha will be next to k to the beta. So now we've got t to the alpha times t to the beta times that's a multiplied by times L to the alpha times K to the beta. And now I'm going to do two, th two things at once, or two steps in this next step. First, I'm going to take advantage of my exponent rules. If I have a constant raised to some, some number times that same constant raised to another number, uh, we can add those together so, so that 5 squared times 5 squared equals 5 to the 2 plus 2, or 5 to the 4th. Right, you can do that maybe easier with 2 squared times 2 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. That's the same as 2 raised to the 2 times 2. Um, so this is now going to turn into t to the alpha plus beta times, and then here I have something that looks familiar, right? That's this thing right here, and so that's just my production function. So let's put that back in its original terms, l comma k. And so now, again, bringing this down, I have a statement that f of t l comma t k. So I have scaled up my put my inputs that yields uh, uh, an output that is either scaled up or scaled down, right? That's what I would like to know. And so the question is, does a Cobb-Douglas production function exhibit constant returns to scale or increasing returns to scale or decreasing returns to scale? Well, it exhibits constant returns to scale when this thing on the right is equal to t times f of l and k, um, which is the case when alpha plus beta equals 1. When alpha plus beta equals 1, then my firm has constant returns to scale. Because then this thing here just turns into t to the first, and then I just get f of tl comma tk equals t times f of l comma k. Now, that, that gives me a good cut point, because I'm going to have increasing returns to scale whenever it's scaling up. That will happen whenever this multiplier is greater than t, which will be the case when alpha plus beta is greater than 1. All right? Oop, sorry. And then over here, or one more look at it, we might have the case that we have decreasing returns to scale when alpha plus beta is less than 1. So that, that's how we can figure out what, what, what situation we find ourselves in if we have a Cobb-Douglas production function. Now I said this is handy because it's analytically tractable. It's also handy uh, because with some logs here, uh, just, to, just to show you, it turns it, it turns out that a Cobb Douglas production function can also look like this um, alpha l sorry alpha log l plus beta log k and with a little bit of work this is pretty easy relatively speaking to estimate uh, for a firm uh, with with statistical methods and so we can try to find these coefficients the alpha and the beta for a particular firm by looking at their production technology based on or production you know their history based on their output and their inputs um, and if we can do that then we can try to tell the firm whether it has constant returns or increasing returns or decreasing returns um, but it's going to vary very much uh, across firms it's going to vary within a firm uh, from one you know one situation to the next as they scale up they might have increasing returns to scale for a while and then it diminishes um, and it might vary just over time as the macroeconomic forces adjust it but in any case, it's a, a useful concept so we can tell whether firms can increase or decrease their uh, costs uh, based on increasing or decreasing their scale. Okay, so just to recap, let's look back at what we've done. Uh, we were starting out looking at changing all inputs proportionately. Um, so we already looked at when we only change one input because the other one's fixed, that's short run production. We also looked at what happens when we uh, trade them off against each other to stay on an isoquant. In this case, we're shifting them all up or shifting them all down. So that concept is, we call that returns to scale. 
Um, the way we tell if something has returns to scale is we you know, scale it up and then see what happens to the, the level of output. In this case, we can double it. If you prefer numbers, you can double it. That's a good way to, to play with it just to see. Uh, more generally, we just increase it by some factor. Uh, and if that factor is greater than 1, then that, that, you know, that, that increases it. So here we have the definitions of increasing and decreasing returns to scale, as well as uh, earlier constant returns to scale. And we found that for a Cobb-Douglas production function, uh, the sum of the coefficients or of the exponents is what tells us uh, what type of firm we have. Okay, so that's returns to scale. Um, now we've talked about pretty much everything there's, there is to talk about in terms of production from an intermediate micro perspective. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is costs. So uh, firms will produce some stuff uh, using the best available means. We're going to talk about how they uh, produce these things at minimum cost. And then eventually we'll talk about, that'll be the model of the firm. And then we'll talk about how they interface with the market and how that determines what their output and inputs will be. Cool. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you again soon.